After 17 long months, Broadway is finally back and I'm so excited. Theater lights have been dimmed and curtains have been closed since March 2020 until tonight. The new play, Pass Over, will mark the official reopening of Broadway. It addresses issues of racial injustice and is written by Black playwright Antoinette Wandu. But Pass Over is just one of the plays changing the face of Broadway. In an effort to add more diversity, possibly spurred by the Black Lives Matter movement last summer, every new play performed on Broadway this fall is written by a Black playwright. That's seven plays by seven different black playwrights. Don't tell me you can't go out and find diversity <laughs> for your hires. And I'm so excited to discuss this historic moment with a Broadway legend. She's also one of the producers of the upcoming new play, Thoughts of a Colored Man. And joining me now is Tony-nominated actress and just icon, Cheryl Lee Ralph. First of all, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Zerlina. It's wonderful to be here with you because seeing you where you are in the seat that you are in, doing what you are doing is also part of the change that has been needed for so long. To have you there simply based upon your talent and your ability. Listen, it is worth every protest that I have ever been a part of or seen or everything I've ever spoken up and about as a performer. So you, my young child, my daughter, my sister, I'm happy to see you do better. I'm gonna try not to cry. <laughs> um, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, tr sincerely. Um, I don't even know what to say now, but I'm going to ask questions um, about Broadway reopening because it was so incredibly sad at the beginning of this pandemic to see Broadway closing along with so many other things and artists and black creatives not having that outlet and that ability to share their gifts. Um, what is it like to be part of Broadway reopening with seven plays written by black playwrights, which is an incredible moment in history? I mean, I have to think all the way back to when I was a child and the only black woman who had a play on Broadway was Lorraine Hansberry and that was Raisin in the Sun. But look where we are now, mm -hmm. 40 years after Dream Girls, a musical about black women that was on Broadway back in the day. And here I am now as one of the producers of Thoughts of a Colored Man, where we express and go into the feelings of black men now. It is just a wonderful thing to see happen. And it didn't have to happen, but the eyes of the gatekeepers had to be opened up. A young man of color mm -hmm. in, the, in the form of a Brian Moreland in the Theater Alliance, there had to be in a place to say, look, mm -hmm. we must have change. So you see, protesting, standing up, speaking out, there are some gains to be gotten, and I'm happy to be a part of it with being a producer on Thoughts of a Colored Man. Tell us more about Thoughts of a Colored Man. What should people uh -huh. look forward to in coming to the theater? We, we understand that, you know, the, the theater is going to be opening with very strict protocols in place for COVID. But tell us about the actual production itself. I mean, this is an incredible play that mixes so much of what we love now. I mean, you've got poetry. You've got spoken word. You've got scene acting. You've got great talent. I'm very happy that my nephew, Tristan Wilde, is part of the class, a part of the cast. Most people remember Tristan from The Wire and so many other things since mm -hmm. that. But we have the most incredible cast of young black men. And it is just they just tell their stories. And, you know, very often black men of any age are usually seen as the problem. And these men telling their stories let you know what the solution is, what their emotional solution is. And I'm so very happy to be a part of this. For anybody who loved for colored girls when the rainbow is not enough, well, that was for the colored girls. This is now for the colored men and those who love them. I love that so much. Oh, Thank yes. You. And we all do. That's the thing. It's like, you know, when you're talking about black men, we all have to realize, like, 
They're related to us. Um, they are all our family, and we love them dearly. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, and I think I've all. They are family. They Absolutely. are our friends. They are um, our teachers. Yeah. That's right. They're our family and our friends and our teachers. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, about, I mean, everybody knows you from Dream Girls. I think that was the first uh, time a lot of folks saw you on Broadway um, and Tony Award for Best Mus Actress in a Musical. And essentially since then, you've just been working. I mean, I've always wanted to ask you um, how many people come up to you on the street and talk about your role as D on Moesha, because I feel like in a lot of ways, I that show came out at a very important time in my adolescence, but also I feel like that was sort of like the, the conversation I wish I could have with my uh, my parents, you know, the, that honest and compassionate, caring, loving parent and guardian. Talk about the impact of that role and whether or not people still come up to you and talk about it. You know something, Zerlina, it's interesting. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, I'm always somebody's dream girl and Moesha mama. Not Moesha's mother, Moesha <laughs> mama. And it's all the time. And But now what's really starting to, to happen is people want to know about shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And Rita Louise Watson with Sister Act Two. I never knew how iconic these three <laughs> things in my career have become for people. And I, I just love it because what's happened is I've gone from generation to another generation to another generation. And every performer wants that because it's very easy for your career to be cut short by where people saw you and then mm -hmm. you don't care. So, you know, I'm very thrilled about it. And right now I'm getting ready to start a new series called Abbott Elementary. And I'm currently on another series mm -hmm. called Motherland Fort Salem. So it just carries on. And I am so thankful to God and goddess in the sky. I, I love that so much. I mean, I love that your career has been robust, consistent. You are always doing memorable roles and you're an icon. Like I said in the intro, you are a literal icon. And I'm so grateful to you, Shirley Ralph, for being here, for taking the time out. I want you to please stay safe. I say it to every single guest because we're in a pandemic and I just feel like those positive words, everybody needs them. So thank you so much and please, please stay safe.